Hey, hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. This is Reflex Image. If this is your first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon. And if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to do this basic editing, how I smoothen the background, how I straighten the background, and how I add a smooth effect to my picture. So this picture was taken in Canon 6D. I think I'm using a four light setup. Four light setup. It goes just to the 200 Pro as my main source of lights. 2 flash, and of TT520 flash is the one reflecting on the background and make it look as if the background is blue. As you can see, I'm using a gray backdrop initially. And this is my headlights. This is studio photo lights. So, I'll be showing you how I do the editing, how I extend my background, how I clean up my background in the perfect way possible. So, this should be a seamless process. You should be able to recreate this anytime. And once you know how to clean background perfectly, smoothing your background, I think that's the first step of manipulation. So, the first thing you need to do is what? Is to Take a picture of the Photoshop and adjust the settings on camera raw. And my highlight, I will bring my highlight is okay. I'm going to bring that up the shadow. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. I'll increase my contrast a little bit. Just scroll down to my HSL adjustment layer. Then under the on range, I'll be on the luminous and I'll increase the skin tone. I'll go to the saturation also again. I'm going to increase the cyan for the picture. I increase the blue a little bit also. So once I'm done with the first setting, what I just need to do right now is to open my picture in Photoshop. I'll wait for it to load up. I'll wait for it to load up. Once it does right now, the next thing you need to do is for you to retouch your picture. Retouch it perfectly. Once you do that, because retouch your picture before you do anything manipulation so that you won't have an issue later on. So let me say I'm done with my retouching right now. The next thing I will do right now is to extend my picture, crop my picture the size I want. So the size I use mostly is my 4x5 pixel. I just go to my crop tool. I'll make sure my 4x5 is selected up here. And I'm going to extend from both up and down. Don't mind the white area, the edge is going to be there, but we're going to clean that area up. Just make sure you create enough border room to fit what you want. So I think like this, the border room is okay for me like this. I'll click on my OK. So that being said right now, I'm going to jump to the other document because I've actually retouched my picture over here. I'm done with my picture retouching over here, as you can see right now. The picture is already retouched. So as you can see, I stopped at the extension also. So the next thing for you to do right now is to do is to, for you to separate your subject from the background. To do that right now, duplicate your background layer by clicking on Ctrl J. Let's name this layer now. Let's name it our subject. Subject. Please pay attention to these details. Because these are also details when it comes to manipulation too. That's how I manipulate my pictures. So once you do that, the next thing you need to do is to click on your quick selection too. Then click on select subject. So if you are using 2024 Photoshop, you should have the option here. Select subject or remove BG. But right now, I will use the one that is on all. Photoshop both 2021 2019. So you will see this the option here select subject and wait for it to load up. So you're going to select the picture for you. Though some of the time it's not all that perfect, you just have to make some adjustments to it. And some other time it's going to give you 100 percent accuracy. So now let me just zoom in right now and see. It actually did almost all the job for me. It removed the background for me almost perfectly. So but it's not giving me all the edges. So I just need to do adjustments myself. So I'll pick my polygonal axis too. Make sure it's an addition right now. I'm going to add this area to the selection polygonal. Sorry, so I'm going to add this area to the selection. You can see right now. So just make sure you crop it out the best way you know how to do it. Not it's not a must you follow my technique. You can just use the technique you've been using in the past and get something mm -hmm. nice. Just make sure we actually achieve a nice cropped out picture. So that's what I'm just trying to see right now. So not a must you use the step I use. You can see right now it's actually giving us a very very nice job, but there are some areas you don't actually get to, so you just have to do that manually yourself. But it's giving, of it, giving us an head start, we going to relieve our stress right now. So, I'm going to do the same thing here. As you can see, I'm using my, my subtraction here right now. So, subtract from there, just to make sure I select every area needed, every area necessary. But I think it actually selected the air for me very, very well. Just basic adjustment here. Though this is not necessary since we are not changing background and I'm not manipulating. I just want to show you that whatever I do, I might later decide to manipulate the picture. So, so I won't go back to cropping again. So I want to crop my picture perfectly. So this has been done right now. The next thing you need to do is just to right-click on it. Go to Feather. Then we are going to be feathering by two pixels. I'll click on my OK. Then I'm going to click on my Max. So what it does for us right now is remove our subject from the background. So if I have to turn off your background, you see we have our subject without the backdrop. So let's turn this back on right now. 
So the next thing you do right now is to go back to your background layer, replicate once more by clicking on Control J if you're using MacBook Command J. So let's name this one now. Let's name it Modify. Modify. So what you do right now is to hold down your Control key, click on the max of your subject layer to bring back the selection for you. Then go to select and select. Go to modify. Then you go to expand. Sorry, select modify. Then you go to expand. I'll be expanding by eight pixel because that that's what I use almost all the time for my picture. Click on my OK. Once you're done with that, all you just need to do is just select the area you want to actually fill up the initial backdrop to make it look very very nice and hyper realistic. So I'll still be using my polygonal lasso tool this time around. I'll be using addition. You can see. Or add to the selection. I'll add it to the selection right now. So these are the area I want to fill up with the initial backdrop color. So I'll do the same thing here also. Do the same thing here. Do the same thing here also. You can see. So this area right now, what I just need to do right now is just to right click on it. I'll go to fill. Under fill, I'll make sure my content away is turned on. Color adaptation is on. My blending mode has to be on normal. And I'll click on my OK. And I'll wait for the AI to do it to actually fill that area up. With the initial backdrop color, don't worry. The, no matter the type of Photoshop you are using, it's going to work perfectly for you. DBU 2019, 2018, 2017. It's going to fill the area up for you in the perfect way possible. So let's see what it's going to give to us right now. And boom. Look at what it did for us. It filled the area up with the initial backdrop color, Ctrl D. So the person that did not see where you're actually editing this picture might think this is how smooth or this is how wide your backdrop is. And that's the goal of manipulation, where someone will be able to tell the difference if your picture has been manipulated or it was actually taken that way. So the next thing we do right now is to duplicate and modify layer once more by clicking on Ctrl J or Command J if you're using a MacBook. Then let's name this now Gaussian Blur. G A S S I U N Blur. B L U R. So what we do right now is just to go to filter on this layer. You can still do that on this particular layer, but I like creating much layers possible, and I advise you to also do so in case you make any mistake. You can just easily go back, delete the layer you're working on, and duplicate the previous layer and start from there again. instead of you to start from afresh again. So right now, I just go to my filter under filter, I'll go to blur, then I go to Gaussian blur. So under my blur, I will put the radius at 100. Sorry, 100, 100. You can go more than that then i'm going to click on my ok but here is where the trickiest part is right now as you can see the moment i blurred out my background you see if i want to zoom in right now the footer shadow is no longer there and here's the footer shadow before so we are going to bring the footer shadow back right now all we just need to do right now is to create a max on our gaussian blur pick your brush the normal brush make sure uh the brush color is on black and this is on white so zoom into the footer area then scroll over the area increase the brush size then scroll over, you can use your brush opacity, let's see 72. Then scroll over that area where you know the shadow was initially. You need to do what? You need to return the shadow back for you. Make your picture look very, 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 very realistic. You can see right now, our shadow is back. So nobody will know we're actually smoothing our backdrop. But the issue I'm having right now is the moment I actually, as you can see, the initial backdrop is ash, but I just added a gel light to it. That's why what gave me blue. But the gel light is not applying to the entire backdrop. So why am I just fill that area up with the background color we want? To do that right now, just create the empty new layer in between your subject and the other background. Then go to your color picker over here. Then sample from the color you want to fill the area up with. I think I'll go with this color initially. Then I'm going to pick my gradients. Pick my gradients. As you can see over here. Make sure that the first selection. And just screw. You can see right now. It fill the area up for us. And it's make it, making it look as if that's how the background is. And if the opacity is too much, if it's too much for you, just come to the opacity and drag it down a little bit. And boom, we've created this very, very seamless backdrop in no time. So to perfect this up right now, let's just add a little bit of smooth effect to it and call it a day. So I'll go to my file manager, I'll go to my file manager, I'll go to my download. I have a particular smooth effect which I just got and I'll be bringing it to my Photoshop. So this is a particular smooth effect I'll be using. Just have to drag it down to my Photoshop. So, as you can see right now, it actually came with background, and that's what most people think that this came with the background, we can't actually use it. Just drag it to whatever area I want to put it. I think around this way is okay. So, click on your OK. What I just need to do right now is to change the blend mode from normal, come down from, from here, normal, change that to what? Change that to, let's change that to screen. 
And for the screen right now, as you can see, it removed the background for us perfectly. But to make it look very, very nice, all you just need to do right now, you go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. Then blow it out a little. Let's blow it out a little. Let's see about, I think 9.6 radius is okay. And boom. So what you just did right now, giving us a very, very cool, nice, manipulated, very, very cool background. And some might think this is how our studio backdrop is. So you can just color grade your picture and call it a day. I'll just be using a particular color. I'll go to my subject layer, go to adjustment, click on my color lookup, load 3D lots, and I'm going to pick it up, pick the file I want up. I'm going to pick it up. This is not on my Photoshop already, it's on my previous version of Photoshop. So I'll go to where my file is, go to where it is, and I'm going to load it up. Please, like. 3D loads. You can see, I'll click on my OK. And boom, it's going to color grade my picture for me automatically. And if support, the saturation is too much, I'm bringing down the saturation a little bit, opacity a little bit. And boom, we already have a nice color graded and very, very clean and seamless backdrop. I hope the video helped uh, Don't forget to like and share with your friends. Some of them might be in need of this. See you guys in my next tutorial. Let's flex out. So in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file, from my overlays down to my color lookup, which is my lot file, so you just have to scroll down to your video. So under the comment, this is my description. So it's not going to load the description for you, you just have to click on show more, click on it. So it's going to show all the options. Once it does that, just click on my store link. So here's my store link. Once you click on it, it's going to take you directly to my store. So you can actually select any file you want. From the color lookup, this is a light skin lot. This is a feather which I use in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my fourth video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files. This includes all my packs. All my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabrics, my color lookup, my presets. So once you buy this, you've already bought everything apart from this one. So here is my flying fabrics. Here is my, in case you want to give me any project for me to work on. Here is my color lookup. Here is my background overlay. And here is my preset file. So in case you're interested in buying any one, you can actually go for them. The good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency, any currency of your choice. You can buy with any currency of your choice. 